Chapter 701, Hope from the White Tree The shopkeeper picked up a metal scoop and scooped out ice cream onto a cone. It seemed very delicious. But when he passed the ice cream cone to Lu Xu, he took away the ice cream the moment Lu Xu grabbed onto the cone, leaving an empty cone in Lu Xu's hands. Coral laughed. Turkish ice cream was famous here as well. Thus, she had brought Lu Xu over to see how Lu Xu would react. The shopkeeper smiled kindly. But they saw Lu Xu biting the cone like nothing had happened. The shopkeeper once again passed the ice cream cone to Lu Xu, but left only the cone in Lu Xu's hand. Lu Xu passed the cone to Coral. Here, this cone is pretty good. Coral was speechless. The shopkeeper stopped playing tricks on him. He wanted to pass the ice cream to Lu Xu, but he realized that Lu Xu was unhappy. Not this again. Lu Xu took the cone from the shopkeeper's hand and said in English, giving me so many cones before finally giving me the ice cream. I don't want the ice cream anymore. From Bari's Distress, plus 666. Who would trick customers into only buying a cone? Did you have any shame? Coral laughed so hard that she could not sit up straight. The lady in the shop next door smiled kindly, as if she was looking at the purest thing in this world. The shopkeeper gave up. He gave Lu Xu five cones and one ice cream before sending him off. Coral asked in Chinese, Lu Xu, why does your brain work differently from others? Lu Xu wore the cones on his fingers, as if he was eating Bugle's corn chips. He was invincible. Lu Xu said, I have no idea. It's been this way since I was young. Suddenly, Coral weakly bent over. She gripped the armrest of the wheelchair. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. What happened to you? Nothing. Coral said weakly, I want to see the Oristano coast. I heard that the sea here is the cleanest and looks like the end of the horizon. Lu Xu silently pushed Coral outside the city. A majority of the coast in Sardinia were not beaches, but sea cliffs formed by the movement of tectonic plates. Since there were few sandy beaches, the amount of pollution was reduced as well. The two of them did not talk and enjoyed the tranquility. Coral's condition should not have worsened so quickly. But if she did not make a move last night, Lu Xu might have been bound even tighter by that silver ray of light. Thus, Coral did not care about her condition and used Gungner. Lu Xu could not determine whether her judgment was correct. He was willing to fight. He did not want to see others sacrifice so much for him either. He did not like to owe others. Lu Xu remembered how Uncle Li and the others, who were selling breakfast, had helped him. He would repay them when he was able to do so. Even after that, he would not forget about their deeds. As for Coral's feelings, Lu Xu was at a loss. He did not know how to start repaying her. Lu Xu brought Coral to the seaside. Coral stretched out her arms. Could you carry me to the cliff? Coral closed her eyes. Lu Xu silently took her into his arms and carried her to the cliff. She was so light that he felt as if he was carrying nothing. The two of them sat at the cliff. Lu Xu opened his hand and silently looked at the white tree mark in his palm. Coral looked over. Is that a tattoo? Lu Xu shook his head. No. Maybe it's a fateful gift. I don't know what it does either. But when you used the Gungner last night, that was the first time I clearly felt its presence. I suddenly thought, could this be a piece of the world tree? If it is, I can save you. Coral laughed. In the ancient records, the world tree blots out the sky. Countless creatures can dance and rest on its branches. How could all this be encompassed within one's palm? I know that you want to help me, but all these are not important. Just be by my side. That's enough. No matter whether you want to bring me away, or protect me like last night, these few days have felt like the happiest moments in my life, thank you, Lu Xu. Although she said so, Lu Xu knew what was happening. 
If the white tree mark had nothing to do with Gungner, then why did it react when a new crack appeared on Gungner? He did not believe that they were not related. Thus, he thought that if he was able to uncover the secret behind this white tree mark, he would be able to save Coral. Coral was slightly depressed. My abilities have been exhausted. My invisible storage equipment came from Gungner. There were still seven fruits that you gave me, but I could not bear to eat them. I wanted to return them to you, but now, sorry. Lu Xu was shocked. Are you crazy? I gave you the fruits for you to eat. But it must have been hard for you to obtain such a rare item, said Coral. The next second, Lu Xu took out another seven fruits. Eat these. Coral was shocked. So many. Lu Xu did not care about his secrets. After all, Coral was about to die. It would be unreasonable of him to continue keeping this secret, right? It was true that he was serious and selfish, but he had morals and feelings too. Lu Xu saw that Coral did not believe him. He exchanged ten more fruits and threw them into his mouth. He did not care whether there would be any effects. He just wanted to prove that these fruits were worthless to him. Coral was speechless. She thought that she had seen through all of Lu Xu's secrets. But she realized that she had only touched the tip of the iceberg. If he made use of all these things, it would not be impossible for him to build up a super organization. If an organization only had less than 20 people, but they were all geniuses who were above class aptitude, how frightening would this organization be? It was hard to imagine. They would probably be able to shake the world. Coral ate all seven fruits in one go. But after the second refresher fruit, there seemed to be no more effect. Her bloodline was purified once again. A whirlpool of magical energy formed at the cliff, but the disturbance was not as large as they had expected. Coral simply stopped at the peak of Class B and did not move further. Her aptitude was already very high. The refresher fruit simply improved it further. This made Lu Xu slightly disappointed. They had to think of another way. But he did not completely give up. At least he had the white tree mark. They may be able to find some clues from there. Lu Xu, do you hate this world? Coral suddenly asked. She slowly leaned on Lu Xu. It was as if she did not want to think about how much strength she had, or how much longer she would be able to last. In the past, she had wanted to hide the truth from Lu Xu and let him accompany her in her final days. She did not want Lu Xu to be upset. When she could no longer support herself, she would find a cliff to jump down from and prevent Lu Xu from finding her. But she could not do so now. Her plans had fallen through a long time ago. This made her slightly sad. A bit. Lu Xu said softly, look at other worlds. They have stuff like the Seven Dragon Balls or Aladdin's Magic Lamp. In times of despair, they could summon a god, a dragon or some other supernatural being to settle everything for them. They can revive the dead and regain what they have lost. But there's nothing like that in our world. I hate it. Coral was amused. This is a serious moment. Don't talk about things like this. But Lu Xu did not seem like he was kidding. If there were seven dragon balls, I would go to find them. I would gather them all, even if it meant death. Bring me to the northern city, Lu Xu. I heard that there is a church called St. Paul's. I want to see it, said Coral in a small voice as she leaned close to him. Sure. Lu Xu nodded his head. I will bring you wherever you want to go. There may be enemies there, said Coral. There are enemies everywhere. Lu Xu said calmly, even if there is a mountain in front of us, I will move it away for you. But Coral still seemed to have many things she kept silent about. Lu Xu did not ask her either. When Lu Xu carried Coral to the wheelchair, he felt how weak she had become. Lu Xu held Coral's pale foot and slender lower leg. Coral blushed. Lu Xu realized that he may have done something profane. 
the atmosphere between the two of them suddenly became ambiguous. Lu Xu braced himself and asked, Are your legs numb? Coral did not reply. She silently looked at Lu Xu. Lu Xu wondered whether Coral understood his Chinese. He slowed down and repeated himself. Are your legs numb? Mama. Coral's heart was beating very quickly. Why did Lu Xu have this kind of request? Chapter 702 The Resentments of Bachelors Chinese dabblers were truly scary. At that moment, Lu Xu had a true experience of this saying. In recent years, Chinese tattoos were a hit among many foreigners. But most of them would need to have their tattoos covered during a China trip due to the embarrassing connotations associated with the characters. Lu Xu pushed Coral back to the city in her wheelchair. They were heading north, since Coral desired so. But they could no longer take the light rail because there were so many eyes on them at the moment. Yu Mingyu had already informed Lu Xu that the Danki had their men deployed in the northern parts of Sardinia, which housed many ports. Coral must go through there before she could return to Sweden in secret. Meanwhile, Cartel and other large organizations, including the Danki, had made peace in the north. People had now recognized that Cartel was a neutral party. You could do anything in their territory so long as you did not mess up their concerts or piss them off in other ways. Many organizations had even warned their members not to mess with Cartel, because they would not stand a chance at winning. According to public information, Cartel's leader, Arturo, was a Class B, but news had it that he defeated Patrick way too easily, which made his true level of abilities a mystery. Some people felt that Cartel was not serious about its cultivation, but for some reason, their average abilities were rather exceptional. This was an annoying fact. This time, Lu Xu and Coral's destination was the northern city Albia. Lu Xu could feel there was a countdown ticking by over his head, urging him to live his life to the fullest while he was still able to. Hence, he was in a hurry to bring Coral to the church. Actually, we can just stay here, Lu Xu, Coral whispered, sitting on her wheelchair, the north is even more dangerous, and I am immobilized. In fact, I wasn't being serious when I mentioned the church. I'm fine with us staying in Oristano. Coral knew that she did not have much time left, and the trip to the north was nothing but a willful wish of hers. Dragging Lu Xu along would only be a waste of his time. Lu Xu shook his head. We are going if you want to go. As people get older, they gradually learn that time is not a cure for everything. We will eventually have to make peace with our scars, but they will always stay with us until death. Lu Xu did not want Coral to have any regrets, which he would have to carry too in the future. Coral looked hesitant. Lu Xu said, Don't worry so much about your injury, nor the dangers ahead of us. There's this sentence that has kept me afloat in all kinds of plight, and it says every ending is a good ending, if it isn't, it means it's not the ending yet. Coral smiled. This was the boy she fell for. At this moment, they heard a roar of engines from in front. Lu Xu stopped walking, and the sparrow shade swooshed out of his celestial map, circling Coral for protection. But he was stunned in the next second. It was the civilians, including the ice cream vendor, the suckling pig seller, and Ah, uh, we happen to walk past here. Where do you want to go? We can send you there, the ice cream vendor, from whom Lu Xu had taken away many cones with his cheekiness, said, as if their encounter was really a coincidence. Now, Lu Xu had already learned that the Sardinians had gone out of their way to hide their whereabouts. Admittedly, he felt touched, because even the commoners were willing to stand in the way of large organizations just for the two of them and for the justice they represented. Even their quiet stroll seemed admirable and adorable to Lu Xu. In the past, he always thought that commoners in foreign countries must be living a hard life, but reality showed him that nothing was absolute. Maybe that was the case for civilians under the control of the Danki and the Department of Faith Theory but there were other organizations of justice, like the cartel. Lu Xu firmly believed that it was cartel's participation and encouragement that motivated this civilian movement. 
Actually, unlike what most large organizations believed, cartel's members were not restricted to metahumans. Most of the ordinary residents on the island were their members too. It was an organization where commoners and metahumans coexisted exceptionally harmoniously. It's okay. We are going to somewhere far away. Albia, Lu Xu told them the truth with a smile. Ah, what a coincidence. We are heading to Albia too. Why are we going there again? The ice cream vendor asked the lady beside him. Concert, the lady replied, we are going to attend a concert. Come on. Let's go together. Coral raised her head to look at Lu Xu. Her smile was as warm as the sunlight. Sure. Thank you everyone for sending us there. The cruise ship Vikings was about to reach the Strait of Gibraltar, which was situated between the borders of Spain and Morocco. The ship continued to travel northward against the sea wind. Its destination was Holland. Meanwhile, the entire intelligence center of the Heavenly Network had their attention concentrated on Sardinia. Numerous people were waiting for the reappearance of Lu Xu and Coral, who would provide them with further assistance. It was no exaggeration to claim that the whole network's European intelligence network operated for Lu Xu alone. The agents were willing to sacrifice themselves for him, but the latter had refused their favors. To Lu Xu, this was like the age-old painful question. A railway forked into two paths. There were ten people standing on one path, and one person on the other. So, who would you let your train hit? With the control stick in your hand, how would you choose? In Lu Xu's situation, he was standing on one of the railways, and his intelligence comrades on the other. He would destroy that hellish train with his fist. Of course, the Vikings was notified of the update. On board the Vikings, Chen Zuan was overwhelmed in admiration and envy. So, Brother Xu was our leader, and he abandoned us to elope with that European girl? It was a logical deduction because Lu Xu would not have been there if he were not their leader. Besides, the leader's identity had always been kept secret and the only piece of information made known to the team was that the person was an acquaintance of theirs. In the meantime, Chen Zuan had just gone through a heartbreaking period of breaking up with Du Xu Mei after being together for one sweet week. At the moment, the entire cruise ship was overflowing with the resentments of bachelors towards Lu Xu and his little girlfriend. As for Chen Zuan's breakup, Chang Chiu Chiao quipped that Du Xu Mei was a smart girl as she had learned Zuan's true nature in seven days and made a wise decision to break up. Chapter 703 The shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Aboard the Vikings, Chao Qingxi had been analyzing the intelligence report meticulously all along, as if filtering for the information she needed. Meanwhile, Chen Zuan, Chang Chiu Chiao and Han Yu had already become used to her quiet nature. Han Yu was a new member, but a talented one. Despite his Class B aptitude, he had accomplished multiple military achievements along the national border. Like Gao Shenin, he was also a bellicose man. Before the start of the mission, Han Yu had the stereotype that all class aptitude geniuses were merely spoiled elites, and that only people like him, who grew up in hardships, could shoulder the future responsibilities of the Heavenly Network. However, he soon realized the difference between the geniuses and himself, because the former had always been partaking in dangerous missions and only the cream of the elites could survive. Han Yu was confused. Brothers Wan, who's that brother Shu you are talking about? Do all of you know him? Is he a class aptitude genius too? Chang Chiu Chiao was stunned. Have you not heard of brother Shu? Well, sounds familiar to me. Actually, Han Yu had wanted to say, who is he? Why must I know him? But judging from Chang Chiu Chiao's face, it seemed like a shame to not know the person. Chang Chiu Chiao slapped his forehead in realization. Oh right, his stories in the Lopner remains are not released to the public. But you've probably seen him before. He's the captain of the Flood of Bronze. Hanyu was dumbfounded. OMG. 
The Flood of Bronze had been dismissed right after the closure of the remains, but its legend lived on in the Daoyuan class. Nowadays, their fame was almost comparable to that of Class A geniuses. They were a bunch of annoying yet strong people who would come to rescue whoever was in danger in the remains. So it's him, Hanyu said, feeling excited, are you close? Can you introduce me to him? Lying on the deck chair, Chen Zuan gazed into the sky melancholy. I wanted to. But he, our team leader, has eloped with his girl. All forces on the island are after him now, Cheng Chiu Chiao said, I'm not even sure whether he can live until we arrive. Speaking of which, we won't be of much help anyway. If Brother Xu can't settle it, neither can we. He glanced at Chao Qingxi, expecting her reaction. By then, Lu Xu was an official Class B, but Cheng Chiu Chiao believed that Chao Qingxi had attained a similar state too. In spite of their similar aptitudes, it was commonly thought that Chao Qingxi was special as compared to other Class A geniuses. There were a few others like her too, and they were called super geniuses, in secret. They had earned their title through their supreme performance during missions and training. Chen Zuan continued looking up at the sky. It might be too late by the time we arrive. Why didn't Brother Xu wait for us? He has made tens of thousands of enemies now. Although it sounds sad, who else in our generation can be compared to him? It's no exaggeration to say that he's the strongest in the world, only second to the heavenly kings. At this moment, Chao Qingxi suddenly stood up. She said, we jump into the sea. Chen Zuan was shocked. Are you insane? Why must we jump into the sea? It'll take some time for the Vikings to even reach Holland. But we'll save a lot of time by entering the Mediterranean straight from the Strait of Gibraltar and swimming to Sardinia, replied Chao Qingxi calmly, the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. Chen Zuan was dumbfounded. I understand your logic. But that means we have to swim over 200 kilometers. Is it that hard? Chao Qingxi asked, expressionless. She had already started to pack up her stuff. I can keep your luggage in my invisible storage equipment. My military rank is only lower than Lu Xu's. Now, I am in command. So, move. She was not joking. What if I tell you that I can't swim? Chen Zuan asked carefully. In the next instant, he was lifted up by his collar. Then, he was thrown into the sea by an immense force much stronger than what a class C should possess. Ah! Uh. Flop! All passengers on the cruise ship circled around the railing to see what was happening. Han Yu and Cheng Chiu Chiao looked at each other in hesitation. When Chao Qingxi shot them a cold look, Cheng Chiu Chiao yielded immediately. We'll jump down ourselves. Having packed up all the items, Chao Qingxi looked into the distance towards Sardinia. There was a trace of worry in her eyes. Although it sounded cool to fight against tens of thousands of enemies, Lu Xu must be in danger. She hoped it was not too late yet. After a whole day of swimming, the coastline was finally within their sight. Chen Zuan felt that his limbs were getting pale and swollen due to the long time in water. Finally. Chen Zuan was ecstatic. Twenty-four hours of mechanical swimming was no joke. After they came ashore, Chao Qingxi asked a passerby in English, Is this Sardinia? Confused, the person replied, This is Corsica. Sardinia is in the south. Chen Zuan drew a startled breath. He looked at Chao Qingxi and complained, It's true that the shortest distance between two points is a straight line. But you weren't going in a straight line. Ah! Flop! Cheng Chiu Chiao and Han Yu squeezed out a flattering smile. We'll jump. We'll jump. Corsica was not too far away from Sardinia. Thus, provided that they were heading in the correct direction, they would reach Albia, the northern city of Sardinia, in one hour. In the meantime, Lu Xu and Coral were sitting on a truck. To his surprise, there were intercoms installed on the trucks, as though they were a fleet for an organization. The ice cream vendor glimpsed at him and smiled. 
long-distance goods delivery is very boring. Thus, we got the intercoms for relaxation. We can talk or even sing to one another to kill time. That was the local culture here. All of the Sardinia residents were happy because they could find happiness in their everyday lives. World peace would have been within reach if everyone in this world could be like them. Some people would argue that it was cartel's protection that gave them the luxury of constant happiness. But Lu Xu disagreed. It was like the age-old question, which one preceded the other, the chicken or the egg? Cartel was also part of the local population. That was why their members were happy, although they appeared strange to the outside world. Young man, can you sing a Chinese song for us? We all like the Eastern culture. It's so mysterious, the ice cream vendor asked, smiling. Over the intercoms, the other drivers echoed his request. Even Coral looked at Lu Xu, her face full of expectation. But Lu Xu had never sung any songs other than Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, because he did not have time for hobbies in the past. Yet, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star was too childish for his age. Under Coral's anticipating gaze, Lu Xu hesitated and started singing, You live on the Lus Highland, your dad is your mom's cousin. They knew that his lyrics were all wrong, but they still listened for the fun of it. Finally, the fleet arrived in Albia amidst their laughter and singing. The sky was clear. It was 3.14 p.m. When they stepped into Albia, Lu Xu suddenly sensed danger in the air. As expected, they were there. Chapter 704, A Carnival The moment they entered Albia, everyone saw dozens of people standing on guard by the road. After the pickup truck passed by, the ice cream truck uncle looked at the rearview mirror. One of them picked up the phone as they saw the fleet of cars leave. The uncle took a deep breath and roared into the intercom, We've been discovered. Change of route. Activate Plan B. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Did he not say that he had picked them up on the way? Why did he have a plan A and a plan B? When the people behind them boarded the cars by the road and chased after them, the pickup truck suddenly started to accelerate. A race suddenly started on the highway between uncles and aunties. Lu Xu felt very uncomfortable. He was an ice cream truck uncle. He should just sell ice cream and occasionally share dirty jokes with the auntie next door selling suckling pigs. How did all this suddenly happen? He felt that fate was like a wild donkey that had run away. He did not know where it was going. They're behind us. I can't shake them off, said an auntie through the intercom. It's fine. If you can't shake them off, don't let them get close. The uncle took out a pair of sunglasses from the glove box and put it on. He said energetically, they are afraid of death as well. We have some experts on board. As long as we can reach our destination, they can't do anything. The pickup truck rushed along the highway. They were like heroes you would encounter in your ordinary life. Lu Xu asked, Uncle, where are we going? The uncle said fiercely, you'll know when we reach. Now, I feel like we are in the movie 300. Lu Xu was silent. He was right. I feel like I am in Sparta now. If someone said that to Lu Xu under normal circumstances, Lu Xu would definitely be upset. He preferred his fate to be in his own hands. This group of uncles and aunties knew that they wanted to see St. Paul's Cathedral in Albia. That was their original destination. But now, Lu Xu suddenly laughed and stopped asking. He realized that now, he was not fighting alone. There were countless people who were more than willing to help him. Every time he felt that the world was detestable and cold, a group of kind-hearted people would definitely appear. Coral leaned on Lu Xu weakly. She did not care where they went. Her body grew weaker and weaker. It seemed as if she could no longer sense the wind blowing in from outside. She suddenly said, Lu Xu, I had a dream last night. Her voice was so soft, it was as if the entire world had become softer. Lu Xu could only hear her voice. Lu Xu asked calmly, what did you dream about? 
I dreamed about a house. The door was closed. When I turned around, I saw a sofa that took up half of the living room. The lightning was very warm. There was even a small bar counter. There was the sound of a casserole cooking from the kitchen. The smell of the soup wafted throughout the house. Night was about to fall. It was as if lanterns had been put up in the city. Suddenly, the door opened. You stood in the cold, smiled and said, I'm home. I walked over to hug you. It was as if I was hugging the entire world. I was a bit scared. The sound of Gungner cracking sounded as if it had come from within an abyss. But I was not afraid of them. But along with the cracking sound, I also. Coral spoke to this point before falling into a deep sleep. Her breath was long, but weak. Lu Xu slowly clenched his fist. It sounded as if she was saying, Goodbye. At the same time, Chao Qingxi, Chen Zuan and the rest had just reached Albia. They silently looked at the residents rushing about. It seemed as if something big was about to happen. The residents walked along the streets. They seemed as if they were about to hold a carnival and turn the entire world into a busy street. What are they doing? Chen Zuan was dumbfounded. Did we land at the wrong place? Do I have to go up again? Flop. After more than ten seconds, Chen Zuan stood up again. He was drenched. He chased Chao Qingxi and roared, I was joking. Do you know what a joke is? Chao Qingxi paid no attention to him. She stared at a person in the crowd and said, follow him. Maybe we can find an answer. Don't fall behind. Just as she finished speaking, she saw Chen Zuan bring Cheng Qiuqiao and Han Yu to approach that person. That person did not react. Chen Zuan and Cheng Qiuqiao attacked from the front and back, causing the person to faint. Chen Zuan took advantage of the chaos to dump the person into the rubbish bin. He delightedly raised the white earphones in his hand. Now, we can figure out what on earth they are doing. Chao Qingxi was silent. Do you understand what they are saying? Chen Zuan put on the earphones. He could only hear German. He laughed out loud. How awkward. Chao Qingxi decided to walk into the crowd. Follow these residents. We will eventually find out what they are doing. Follow me. Coral had fallen asleep. Her eyelids occasionally quivered. Lu Xu looked out of the window. The white clouds were moving backwards. After 30 minutes, Lu Xu suddenly heard the sounds of bass and guitar, as well as drumming sounds in the distance. A noisy crowd had gathered. Lu Xu was dumbfounded. So this group of uncles and aunties had brought them to the music festival. Someone from the cars behind picked up the phone and dialed them. We are now in northern Albia. We have not lost sight of the target. It was as if the practitioners in northern Sardinia were drawing closer to Albia. They were like sharks in the ocean, who could smell the scent of blood from dozens of kilometers away. Their teeth were very sharp. It was like a celebration for beasts. They would walk up to the sacrificial offerings indispensable for the celebration, kill and gobble it up. At that moment, one of the cars that was following Lu Xu saw the pickup truck drive into the crowd at the music festival. They almost thought that this fleet of vehicles was crazy. They carelessly crashed into civilians. Did they want to die? But the crowd, who seemed to have been listening to the music, parted and opened up a road for the pickup truck to drive through. Then, they returned to their original positions, blocking the cars following behind with a human wall. It was as if this had been rehearsed. It was as if the people who had been following Lu Xu and Coral were watching an incredible stage play. What amazing chemistry among such a massive crowd. What are they doing? One of the people who were following Lu Xu and Coral roared in anger. This made him very uncertain. It was as if they were about to lose sight of their target. Chapter 705, Explosive Drummer They looked up and realized the drummer on stage was looking at them and laughing coldly. 
The drumbeat was quick and explosive. The crowd was moving along to the rhythm of the drumbeat. Arturo. Someone said in a small voice when they saw the drummer, he is controlling everything. Tell everyone. Surround this place. Someone else laughed coldly. Satan himself is here. Even if Arturo is present, so what? Arturo's hair was tied up. His beard had a charm unique to middle-aged men. He was like an artist who walked through the wilderness. His body was full of explosive power. Arturo suddenly aimed at the microphone. The voice of the main vocalist slowly faded away. Arturo laughed. Our guests are here. For this performance, we, the cartel, stand on the side of justice. The audience cheered. All the people in Sardinia were celebrating. The people who had been following Lushu and Coral stood outside the crowd and looked coldly at Arturo. They were surprised by how the cartel was no longer neutral, unlike in the past. But they did not dare to respond to the insults and mockery they received. Arturo's abilities were a mystery. No one knew exactly how strong he was. But he was not someone that small fry like them could handle. The main vocalist started to sing again. But this time, she was much more excited and indignant. Our world has turned into a desolate scene. But we still hold on to our swords and shields. We defend the border of justice. The enemy is like an ocean. We look at the black stream rolling in from the distance. We are invincible. Lu Xu suddenly saw everyone outside the pickup truck smiling kindly at them. The driver uncle, who was wearing a pair of sunglasses, said with an air of coolness, Plan B has been activated. Let's go. Lu Xu carried coral bridal style and was surrounded by a crowd. They walked towards the border of the venue. He did not know where this group of people were bringing him. The venue of the music festival was surrounded by cars that formed a boundary. Lu Xu and Coral were being surrounded and escorted to the border. A car door opened in front of him. The driver, who was wearing an exquisite ceremonial robe, had alighted and opened the door for them. Lu Xu carried Coral and entered the car. Someone placed a white floral crown on Coral's head. The people who had been following them stood on the roof of their cars, but they could not see where Lu Xu and Coral had gone. The members of the cartel were blocking their whereabouts. Lu Xu suddenly felt that this was like a spy movie. The people were his bodyguards. Just after he boarded the car, the rhythm of the drumbeat changed. The hundred cars outside the venue suddenly turned on their headlamps. They revved their engines and rushed out. Every car was traveling in its own direction. No one outside the venue could see which car Lu Xu was in. Arturo continued drumming on the stage, but the singing had stopped. Arturo laughed wildly. His ponytail wildly swinging behind him. The celebration has started. Follow the light. The members of the cartel were like a group of behavioral artists who had gone mad. The people who had been following Lu Xu and Coral turned pale. Looking at the dozens of cars that were moving at the same time, they could not determine which car Lu Xu and Coral were in. They dialed a number and roared, We have lost our target. We have lost our target. The cartel is shielding them. In the carnival world, the cartel had never met Lu Xu and Coral before. But they were willing to fight the entire world for them. Lu Xu sat in the car, confused. He asked the driver, Brother, where are we going? Everything has been prepared. Don't worry. The driver announced with a look of certainty. What has been prepared? Lu Xu was very confused. Brother, this is our first time meeting, but I really feel like jumping out of this car. The driver turned around and asked, Aren't the two of you getting married at St. Paul's Cathedral? Lu Xu was dumbfounded. He had only told the uncle that they were going to St. Paul's Cathedral. Why did the cartel think that they were getting married? Lu Xu suddenly realized that the white tree mark in his hand was growing brighter and brighter. He had not noticed until now. 
it was as if it wanted to absorb Gungner. Lu Xu did not know what was happening. The driver suddenly said, Are you not getting married in St. Paul's Cathedral? Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Why do you all think that we are getting married? Because that place is a sacred spot to get married, said the driver naturally. Every year, countless tourists come here. They all hold the conviction that they will protect each other for the rest of their lives and come here to get married. They make their vows there and receive blessings there. How sacred! Lu Xu was dumbfounded. Only after a long time did he realize that he did not understand much about the situation here as he was Chinese. When Coral told him that she wanted to go to St. Paul's Cathedral, she probably meant what the driver said. But he did not understand. Lu Xu sighed. He did not understand, and Coral did not reveal it either. Coral probably did not want to hold an official marriage. But as a young girl, she would eventually have regrets. Thus, she wanted to see the weddings of others and slowly make up for her regret. She had never told Lu Xu about this regret. Could you drive a bit faster, said Lu Xu in a soft voice. Sure. The driver stepped on the accelerator. He was like a warrior who rode on a galloping horse. The civilians of Sardinia were all fired up. The driver felt as if he was the main character. It was amazing. Suddenly, Chao Qingxi, Chen Zuan, and the rest who were walking among the crowd suddenly felt that it was not as disorderly and unsystematic as before. The crowd was flowing like water, surging in one direction. What's happening? Chen Zuan was dumbfounded. I didn't see anyone giving orders. This group of people seem as if they had suddenly received orders to all run in one direction. Someone is giving them orders, said Chao Qingxi calmly. They are just using less technologically advanced methods. After one person receives information, that person will tell others. Look. They're discussing among themselves. And no one is talking to us. Chang Chiu Chiao said, they have a goal in mind when spreading the information. We are strangers, thus the civilians of Sardinia have cast us outside of their information network. They all know one another. There's no need for us to enter their information network. We just have to go with the flow. They will eventually point us towards the right destination. Chao Qingxi calmly walked forward. We will definitely be able to see Lu Xu at the destination. Everyone, be prepared to fight. He has secretly done a lot for us. I feel like we are unworthy. We should do something for him too. Han Yu and the rest were dumbfounded. There seemed to be a lot that they did not know about, but Chao Qingxi knew what had happened. What did Lu Xu do that made Chao Qingxi feel unworthy? Chao Qingxi was a genius acknowledged by the Class A geniuses. While Lu Xu was a lunatic. What does it mean to be happy? Cause it looks like we all don't know Last half full or empty Man, we just put them on the show Try to look to the heavens To tell us things that we better